Neil, we're down by the towpath on the river store. Behind you, beautiful fields, beautiful land. Uh, but you're concerned. What are your concerns that may not always stay this way? Well, there's plans to build a uh, highway uh, across this, this area. It's going straight through the fields. It's going through the water meadows. It's going across the lakes. It's going um, across the whole of this area. And they haven't made any... Um, references to the nature that's present here at the moment. So for people from Harlow to understand this, it's a road. Roads are going from more or less where Pie Corner, Plume of Feathers is, coming straight across here into the industrial estate at Edinburgh Way, is that right? That's correct, but it's more than that. It's a raised highway. It's built on conduit. It's in the air. This is floodplains. What, what are the, for the wildlife, for the ecosystem, what are the possible consequences, ramifications here? It's going to be devastated. Uh, the developers have made no bones about it. They're not, they're not even doing an impact study until they, until they get planning permission. And then they've decided they will offset the damage that's done. How long have you, you live around here? I've been living around, I've lived in Harlow all my life and I've been a boater for over 20 years. So how long have you known about this? I was first made aware two years ago and didn't think it was gonna happen. Three weeks ago, uh, I found out and I'm devastated. I saw an otter the other day. It's, we've got them back. But you must have seen the plans of Harlan Gilson Garden Town and all the plans about the houses, which are just around the, around the back of that hill, uh, the plans. So this is inevitable, isn't it, Neil? The housing estate may be inevitable because that has planning permission, but this development hasn't, it's not even their um, preferred site. They would have much preferred to go through Hartford. It's a Hartford development. They're encroaching through Essex and we're taking the cost of that. They're treating Harlow people like mugs. So what happens now for you? What do you, apart, you've, you've clearly, as our cutaway shot shown, done, done a little bit of work around here to highlight what's going on. What else can you do? It's the first time in my life I've actually got up and thought, it matters, make a stand now. A few hundred signatures may make the difference. The councillors in the town must know that we love this area. The pandemic, so many walkers along this, they love this area. It was, it's, it's the lungs of our community. Some people might say, Neil, that your parents, my parents, they came down here in, in many, many, many years ago to what was once village, it was called the Newtown. This is almost the cycle of, circle of history, isn't it? I, in a way, you're, you're right, but the, that was why the green bill was built in the first place. Well, we had a green bill, we weren't supposed to build any anymore. It was designed to be a market town. They're now just filling it with concrete. Behind me now, there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of millions of tonnes of concrete. And that's what you're, say, you're saying also that, that you know, we, when I mentioned that, I think earlier you said, well, hold, that's not Frederick Gibbard's plan. This is not part of the consequences of Gibbard's and somebody has to stand up for Gibbard's principles. Exactly. When the town was first built, it was sustain, It was done to be sustainable with the real word of it. The jobs came with the town. People came here with a job. They put in 23,000 houses, which is maybe 50,000 people, but they haven't brought 50,000 jobs. They expect people to commute into London again. I think it's outdated. The pandemic's shown that. They need to think again.